Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we're talking about some design mistakes that are ruining your house. Now, I'm gonna share with you some spaces that have these mistakes and I'm gonna point them out to you and what I would do differently to improve them and make them work so you can avoid this in your home. Now, this first space. I actually like this. I think the wall color is really nice. The use of tones in this space is beautiful, but there are some fine details that honestly I would never choose. I don't think are elevating this space or taking the fullest advantage of what it's offering. Here's what I mean. We've got all of this great trim and molding. This is clearly a home with some classic traditional details in it. And I think that's great, but some of the choices like the backsplash and the flooring don't really give me that. And I definitely think the style could be made to feel more modern, but in a way that's keeping with the house. So with the tile, for example, I can tell it's been replaced because of where the tile changes. It looks to me like at one point there was probably carpet in the living room and tile in the kitchen. They didn't like the carpet in the living room, so they put this wood flooring in, which I really like, and then they changed out the tile in the kitchen. I could be wrong on that, but one of these two was changed. This is not the original, and I can tell that right away. So the flooring for me, the tile in the kitchen, I would have done like a basic 12 by 12 square tile laid at a 45 degree angle. I think if you chose something that was really bright and fresh and neutral like the flooring that is in here, it would have a very modern feeling. That would give us a little bit more of a classic reference and having a neutral color would have made it feel more modern like the tile that's already in this space. Something else I'm noticing here that does not make me happy and I would like for all of you to avoid is actually a situation with the backsplash. You you can see where it ends here at this cabinet. It extends past the cabinet and ends at the countertop. You typically take the backsplash and stop it in line with the cabinetry. So you have a little bit of an overhang when it comes to the countertop. In this instance, you don't have that. So you get this awkward, like, you know, one inch sliver of tile on the outside edge of the cabinet that just doesn't feel like it's supposed to be there. So for me, I, I would just stop it a little bit short of that. And so I get this beautiful little edge detail of the countertop. Something that I am, you know, 50-50 on, I don't love, I don't hate, is the accent tile backsplash. We have this centralized kind of tile behind the cooktop that's a different type than the tile on either side or behind the countertop. I like the subway tile, I think it's classic. It's got this gray tone to it that, yeah, a lot of people don't like gray, but I think in this space actually works. So I would have just probably done all of that. I'm not hating on the tile that is featured behind the cooktop. The appliances are great, I love the vent hood. Even though the cabinetry does not go to the ceiling, I'm okay with it because it's staggered. We have some that's a little bit taller than others and it breaks up a lot of those lines and creates variation. I love the crown molding and how thick, substantial it is and behind there it looks good. So if you're not going to take your cabinetry to the ceiling, this is how you do it. I also love that there's additional molding on the cabinetry. That way it has more of that substantial feeling that references back to the architectural style of the home. You know, and a lot of people would say like, oh no, you know, this angled kind of island situation with the wall happening here is dated like yeah probably a more modern house or something we're building today would not have this they would have taken out that wall and just did one big island that could be an option here but for a mid-level renovation like there's nothing wrong with this kitchen it functions well it looks good it's clean it's fresh it's bright there are just some updates you can do to it that would really elevate the styling of it and make it fit more in the character of the home but feel more updated or modern without having to gut everything out and get rid of it because there's nothing wrong with a space like this. As a matter of fact, it looks pretty good to me. Now, no matter what your home is or your style, I am here for you. No matter what project you are working on, you can always book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me using the link in the description box down below or going to intro.co slash Garrett Lachic. Speaking of spaces that have great potential, I want you to look at this house here. It honestly looks a little bit crazy in this photo right now for a couple of reasons. And I want you to ignore the vertical blinds and the word sign. We're pretending like that doesn't exist, okay, for the sake of some other things we're talking about. And the reason I'm saying it looks kind of crazy is we have this insanely vibrant orange wall and then we have gray floors. I'm not a lover of 
using gray all over an interior space, okay? I just, I, gray is not my favorite color in the world. It's a great accent color. It's a great base layer to, to bring other things into. I wouldn't have chosen gray floors because that doesn't look like real wood to me, but that's just me. The orange, I'm a lover of color. I love a vibrant, bold color. This is just not how it should have been used in this space. So the redeeming qualities of this space are, once again, the wall color is a great neutral. It's a good backdrop. The kitchen has a lot going for it. It doesn't have those staggered cabinets, but there are things we could change about it. I personally would swap out the microwave above the range in favor of a vent hood and then stagger that cabinet and have it extend a little bit higher to just kind of elevate the space and make it look a little bit more expensive. And then where this window is here, I know it's hard to see, but stick with me. I would do an oversized Roman blind above the window and the cabinetry to have a little bit more of a substantial feel there. And then I think this kitchen would be a lot better than it currently is looking. The glass tile backsplash is a little dated. It's not what we would do today, but it actually works cohesively with the countertops. And I think that's good. Now, when it comes to the flooring, I think they've done a really good job here of pulling colors from this flooring. Like the flooring has a lot of gray, the countertop and backsplash have a lot of gray. It is cohesive. And then the wall color is clearly one of the mid tones that's in the floor. So there is cohesivity there. If I wasn't gonna change out the flooring, if I wasn't gonna change the wall color, I would lose the accent wall and then the space would be a lot more neutralized. Updating the window treatment and doing something a little bit more oversized and bigger would look a lot more substantial here. So I would do drapes here, uh, just take them further up, maybe not all the way to the ceiling because I think it would enhance the fact that the cabinetry doesn't extend that far up, but you know, the midpoint between the top of the door frame and the ceiling would be a good place for those drapes. With an accent color like this, this is my real problem here. The orange isn't a bad color, but it's a very strong color, especially to be an accent wall in like a kitchen dining room area. If I was going to use an accent color in this space, I wouldn't do an accent wall. I would do pops of color. This space here for it to have orange, I need to have a handful of orange accessories in the kitchen. Get me like a glass vase or a bowl or something like that to put on the countertop. Maybe you even get like a really cool orange KitchenAid mixer. I wanna see a rug that has a little bit of brown and tan in it and has that orange. Now we're starting to build and layer those colors together. I'm gonna to put together a little mood board here, all of which will be shoppable in the description box down below. So be sure you head down there and check it out if you see anything you like. A lot of great features in this space and it could definitely be elevated with just a rethinking on the way we're using accent colors in it. I love any and every space. I love every style. And I think the most of you agree with me that beautiful design in any in all of its forms is great and we should be talking about it, which is why I do that here on this channel. And if you are not already a part of the La Chic family, you should take a moment, elevate your space, your life, and everything going on in it by hitting the subscribe button and joining us, become a part of the La Chic family. And I personally would greatly appreciate it if you also gave this video a like. Now, this next space I want you to see, this next kind of thing we have to talk about here also. The space is great, but the mistake is a personal attack on me. Okay, like I'm just gonna call it what it is, it is. Uh, first of all, the things I like about the space. I love the ceiling height here and how like kind of grand feeling the space is. And then to have like the edge taken off of it with this feminine boho vibe happening here, you know, the, the kind of woven light fixture and you know, the, the fringe on the carpet, these little details here. I like that. I think there's a time and a place for it. And this is a really fun place for it. I think, I think that's fun. The things I don't like about the space, one is I think some of the pieces are a little bit like maybe in the wrong spot. This leaf kind of piece of artwork here, it, it feels like it's like sad and alone on that wall. So I need to have like a piece of furniture underneath it or, you know, something like that happening there. I, I just think we need more in this space. It requires something larger scale. And this could be a perfect place for a coffee bar right outside of the kitchen. Oh, love that. And I also don't like whatever these fake vines are that are hanging off the wall here above the kitchen. No, girl. Okay, I know what you're giving your, I, I understand the vibe. You're like, what do I do here? It's this like random empty big wall. What do I do here? Like, oh, we'll add a little something there. Don't add this. I would rather see like some woven basket type pieces there, like some flat woven pieces, put like three, four of them. Actually, I would do an odd number. So three or five of them above this kitchen here on that wall. 
and that's good to go. Add a little bit of texture in there. It's something that is not super expensive, but you can get a bunch of them to create something larger scale. The kitchen itself is where my problem is. I love like 90% of it, okay? I think the colors are great, the layout is great. I actually am feeling the backsplash. I know I'm kind of over that, like, oh, it's like basically textured subway tile and it's kind of gray, but I actually think it works here and I like that. My problem, my problem, and you who know me already know, my issue in this kitchen is that the cabinetry does not extend to the ceiling. This is a very grand feeling space. We have a double height space here, and this is just a double height dining room. Look at this other view here, okay? You can see it's not a massive space, but we have a lot of great scale happening here. And when you look at where this pink accent wall ends, which I'm not mad at the accent wall in this space, because like I said, it's got this kind of feminine boho vibe and, and it just fits for me and I like that. But like, look at the gap between the cabinet and the ceiling there. It literally looks like I, I don't know how to explain what this is. It literally is unnerving to me to see that gap of space there. And I think if this homeowner had a soffit built to cover that up and just close it in, painted it white to match the cabinetry, it would be next level. It would be so like, elevated it would just feel so much more luxurious than it does right now it's standing out and not in a good way this isn't where we want the eye to be drawn to this isn't the feature we want to take advantage of i want to see like this great vent hood this beautiful backsplash we have happening here i want to see this this pop of pink in the accent wall that's where my eye needs to be drawn not to this gap of space above the cabinetry honey so Filling that in, I think, would really, really elevate the space. And this is not something that requires a major, massive renovation. Any, you know, basic contractor could come in and do this, okay? It's getting some good finished grade plywood, having it cut appropriately to size, having a frame built in there. None of this is structural. None of this is super expensive or super difficult, time-consuming. It could be done in a day, okay? And then it would be immediately elevated and look so much more luxurious and expensive because this is a beautiful house. It's a beautiful kitchen. I think it just needs that next step up in adding a soffit there. And for a lot of people, you don't want have like a flat blank soffit there. Okay, we have shaker style cabinetry here. You can add those trim pieces on there to recreate this look and make it feel like it was intentional and purposely there in this kitchen. And I wouldn't even mess with the crown molding, like add some crown molding on top of that soffit you had, boom, next level, elevated, gorgeous. Great lighting here, amazing ceiling height. We just gotta get it together with that gap of space above the cabinetry, honey. All right, here is another kitchen. This, why is this turning into a kitchen video? These are just mistakes I noticed and immediately I think a kitchen is a great place for you to really elevate the space and elevate what's happening in your home. You can add so many great details and you know people say that like you know a kitchen is the heart of the home and I think that matters and you can do so much with a kitchen. This one here I think is actually really really good. I think there's a lot of good things happening here and a handful of things that I would tweak and change to really really make it special. So what I like it is not easy to use white in a kitchen. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's a white kitchen, it's basic, it's boring. It's really not that easy because the whites have to match. They have to work together in the correct way. Otherwise, one looks like a really bright, fresh white and the other looks like a dingy, dull gray white or a yellow white, it looks old and dated, like it needs to be ripped out. This kitchen does not have that going on. It's a very, very bright white, okay? They went to the store and they said like, what is like the purest of pure white? They were like, that piece of copy paper there, that's the color I want. And they managed to match the backsplash and that color. And that's really good. If you're going to use like a really, really, really white white, it has to match, it has to be cohesive and work. I don't think you could bring in basically any piece of furniture, anything else that's white and have it match this. So I think that's where you leave it on the, the front with you know white paint. The countertops are this warmer tan brown tone, which I think works, it breaks up a lot of that white and we need it in this kitchen. The walls are a soft color that's pulled from the countertops and the flooring, which also has that warmth to it. So, you know, probably not my first choices in a kitchen, but it doesn't look bad at all. I like it. My issue with this kitchen, once again, I don't love when cabinetry doesn't extend to the ceiling or doesn't have some sort of variation in the height of it. 
this kitchen doesn't have that. I would probably not mess with that in this kitchen because I like the crown molding that we have going on. I think the cabinetry is in good condition. It looks nice. I, I'm not gonna mess with any of that stuff. This is where we can do something fun with a little bit of decor. We could even add a soffit just above the oven and swap out the microwave for a vent hood. That would really extend the cabinetry up and add a dramatic feature. I don't like that there is nothing above the refrigerator. That's my main problem in this kitchen. It makes a refrigerator look dumpy. It like makes it look extra wide and extra deep. It makes it look like it's sticking out into the space for no reason. And it's easy for me to say like, oh, just add a cabinet above it. But like, where did these cabinets come from? Where are you finding a matching one from? That's a big problem I have with a lot of designers I hear out there that give you know suggestions for these spaces because it's not always realistic. And I try to do that for you. And so in this kitchen, my recommendation, what I personally, if this were my house, what I would do, I would look for a floating shelf. And I'd look for it in a similar wood tone to the floor. And I would add that above the refrigerator. And then you could do something like use wicker baskets or something in that realm that has a little bit of texture to it above the refrigerator to add some storage and to fill that space in. I know it's kind of like adding an open shelf in a kitchen, you know, it's like gonna get dusty, it's gonna get a messy, especially above a refrigerator, yeah. Oh, it absolutely will, but it'll look a lot better than this. And that might be worth cleaning and maintaining. For me personally, it would be. And then above the sink where we have this window, the blinds are just not giving me what I need. It, they're just, it, they're just some white blinds, okay? I don't love that. And I think having a Roman blind here would be so much better. And in a kitchen like this, where we've got this big kind of random gap of space there, I wanna go oversized, take it slightly above the cabinetry, and then it'll feel very full, it'll feel very, you know, intentional. Like you're not just filling a space there with something random, it's not just a big gap of space there. You know, it'll feel like there's something that's supposed to be there. And a lot of times with a sink like this, we'll see a hanging light fixture, like a pendant above it. That could be something to consider adding here if this is a home that could have that done. If there's an attic above it, it's easy, but if there's a second floor in this house, that's not something that's really, you know, achievable without opening up a bunch of drywall. And I just don't personally, I wouldn't do it in my house, so I don't recommend it for you. You could add a fake light fixture there, but that's, it. I mean, it's a fake light fixture, like, okay. And the last thing this kitchen needs is maybe some great bar stools. And I think the bar stools should be in an accent color. I don't think they should be in neutral because we've got enough of that happening. We've got enough white going on. Like, yeah, you could do some tan linen bar stools. They would look good there, but what else are we doing? So I'd look for, you know, what type of furniture do you have? What's the wood tone of that you're bringing in? And then find something that blends well with that and the flooring and then pull pull that into the space because we need a little bit of a grounding force and element there. Maybe you do some accessories and decor above the cabinetry that has that same tone to it. Like I said, if you're adding baskets above the refrigerator, maybe you do them in a slightly darker wood tone to match the chairs and, and then you have cohesivity there. I think it's a good kitchen. It's a basic kitchen. There's nothing like overly flashy about it but it's a really good kitchen. It's a strong foundation that doesn't have to be gutted out and ripped out to, to be made elevated and beautiful. And I think that is something that is really, really positive. Having good bones in a space is what I'm immediately looking for in every space. What can we do with it? How can we elevate what's already there without having to, you know, gut everything out completely, and this kitchen has that. Now, I know what you're going to say, that some of these spaces are a little dated, and absolutely, but honey, let me inform you that sometimes dated things come back, like I exposed in this video right over here, five dated interior design trends that are making a major comeback. Be sure you check it out right over here, and I will see you over there.